you know, life life as an internet celebrity is very difficult. Oh fuck! You, <laughs> you know, it's really it, it's really been a hard time. I, the, it just never stops. The number keep going up. And and the we release your docs. Oh no! Yes, release your docs. Uh, you got a sword history with like you know like some high school girl or something. Just like, it's, why is it always all those things, man? And, like it, it fucking kind of freaks me out. Like if you look at like a lot of these uh, so-called internet celebrities, like once they're like you know. I guess the skeletons come out of the closet. It's always like this weird perverted stuff. Like, dude, like, can't you guys just like, I don't know, like have pictures of you making out with somebody at a fucking party or whatever, like normal ass people. No, it's it, y- y'all got to get fucking weird with it. Like everyone, like as soon as they get some money, they're like, all right, I got like it's eyes wide shut all the fucking time. Like, no, no, you don't. No, you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go to a fucking party at a buddy's house, do a couple of lines of fucking blow, and jump off the fucking roof into a pool like normal people. You know? Yo, that'd be based as fuck. So, Riley, Why are you killing your channel with by posting let's plays and not more memes. Uh, because I can't think of any good ideas for any more memes. Oh, what a one-trick wonder loser. Do uh, Stranger Things for the Nintendo DS. I, I had an idea today. I had a, I got, I got to workshop it. I have a very good, like, five seconds, but there has to be, like, an additional meme that comes after. It's The, the idea is El Camino for the Wii U. <laughs> and no. The intro to El Camino. Is there a song? I don't know if there's a song. Well, br- the Breaking Bad video is not the Breaking Bad song. It's just a song that Demi made. Sounds an awful lot like it. Yeah, that's why I immediately heard it. I'm like, this sounds like Breaking Bad on the DS, and then we made it real. Um, but yeah, you the, do it for Better I, Call Saul. I just have the well, Jason already did it for I Better already, Call Saul. Yeah, I got no views. <laughs> no views. No bitches. Um, Jason tried. Which, by the way, no part of my internet celebrity thing. I am finally, finally, my crown has been reclaimed. For a long time, I got to Lloyd having a higher sub count over Jason until that fucking Amori video blew up, and he passed me with flying colors. But now it's over. I have passed him once again. My crown has returned. Aww, all, all because oh, of a so Breaking sweet. Bad meme that he made. <laughs> <laughs> you should rip me. You should rip more memes off of him, or you know, assume, you know, like more often. Well, You're no. Kidding. Okay. To be clear, I thought. Of yeah, the I, I fucking, I, 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 I totally just like. Blah, 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 blah. The thing I, is, I, I not again, spit it out. I said this on the death stream when I talked about it, but I was the ideas guy. De- Demi made the song. Jason made the video because I don't know how to use video editors, but I thought of it. I heard the song and I was like, "This is Breaking Bad for the Nintendo DS." And then we added the voice clip, and then I had Jason make the video. Wow, that's horrible. You sound like a capitalist. <laughs> the capitalism at work, um, yeah. But I'm a, I'm an internet celebrity. I'm more popular than anybody in this room. Uh, get fucked. I'm epic. Um, oh, you want to start the show now? Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead and just start the show now with my abysmal. I think well, what am I at? Seventy four, seventy five. Low, low sub count. Well, your your like old main channel is pretty good. I think it has like a hundred seventy. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I know. I just, I want like Moside Gaming to blow up so bad, just so I can like you know, monetize the shit out of it and, and just fucking like, because I just want to, like I said earlier, and I'm not, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I do want to quit my job and do like more content creating and stuff, like more full, you know, that more. You want to go back to the days of uh, claiming unemployment checks and investing in crypto, dude. Fuck yes, that's exactly <laughs> what I want to do. Like, I kind of wish that, like, that's the only bad thing about, like, lockdown is that, you know, like, the, the cool stuff about lockdown didn't last, but all the bad shit has, you know? And, you know, all I was like, it was like, dude, can I just have my good unemployment back now, please? It, that was like a living wage for me. I, I was able to pay my rent and bills and have good groceries and stuff all the time. 
I was also on food stamps and shit. Like, dude, like I gotta reapply to food stamps. You were living a really great poor life. <laughs> oh, it was. It was nothing poor about it. it. Was fucking great, man. It was just fucking great. It was that. Uh, it was exactly. I had a can standard. of beans every night. <laughs> dude, hell yeah, man! Because that's all a man really wants in life is like a roof over his head and a can of beans and you know a good webcam. You know, that's that's all I want. Some Based. good lighting too, and I got good lighting. But anyway, uh, let's go ahead and start the show. Going the usual countdown that I usually do. I just felt like throwing everyone a curveball. I'm sure my editor Demi would just love the shit out of that. Just gonna have to listen and just sort of suss out when uh, to specifically. I'm marking it down. Marking it. Marking down. it down. <laughs> marking it down. Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, joining us today is, of course, uh, Demi. You know, for the hell of it, say what's up, Demi. Yo, what's up, Demi Gloom? She, her pronouns. I'm the editor of the MoCast, and I'm I'm super cool. Look at look at my cool visuals. They, they look yeah, really look awesome. at them. You can see all of our pictures. It's phase. Yeah. Oh yeah. And joining us today, of course, uh, co-host numero dos. It will be uh, Riley. Say what's up, Riley. Hey everybody! I just want to say that I am mourning the loss of one tooth. Skidly diddly do. It was a beautiful thing. Oh, shut uh, up. It's coming back <laughs> next time. It'll come back next for the, uh, <laughs> next episode. I just didn't feel like doing it now. And, of course, uh, the numero uno uh, uh, co-host, uh, Robin. Say what's up, Robin. Hey, what's going on? Not much. Not ru- not much. So, uh, Riley, uh, heard your server got raided like fucking crazy, huh? Tell us yeah, about it. Yeah, so, again, that was another thing about how internet fame is hard. That was the meme. But, like, I literally... Okay, so let me take you to Saturday, right? I'm really high. (laughs) And I'm (laughs) just kind of like hanging around. And I go and like lay down in my bed, like not even intending to fall asleep. Those are like the best naps when you're not exactly intending to fall asleep. Like I'm just going to lay down and hang out. And then you just like conk out and it's like this beautiful nap. So I just had this serene nap. I I was having a great time. And then I wake up and I, I open my Discord server. All like all the gore and dicks are gone at this point. I never saw any of that. But I just see like this line of like bands. And I see like my mods freaking out. And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like I I woke up and my Discord server is like in this general state of disarray. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? So so Robin, you were there for the actual events. So so tell them like what happened. So the, the- the dicks and the gore were still there. You just didn't scroll up. Oh, that that might be that. That's fair. It was just Jason complaining, and like people going, "What the fuck?" I think even fucking Cameron Clark made a fucking comment in there, and I haven't seen. Was that, that Cameron ever. Clark? Yeah, that was Cameron Clark. I, I, I couldn't figure out who that was. It. I thought that might just be like an unrelated person named Cameron. Is that that is Cameron Clark definitively? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, okay. Yes, I have DMs with him. <laughs> I checked to make sure. But yeah, no, he came out of retirement to put an angry face. But um Yeah, I mean I was just I was playing a game and and then I just get the bloop 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 I'm like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> happened the dicks, other dicks, day dicks, dicks. in another server I was in, in a fucking uh like a not safe for work server I'm in. Someone else got raided and I had to go in there and fucking moderate all the shit there. And then I get it again today. Or not today, but but that day. Today, as if I was there, you know, right now. And I was like, "What the fuck, man?" And and fucking, I know who it was. It was Andrew. Andrew banned them, but didn't get rid of the messages. <laughs> okay, well, listen, Andrew is kind of incompetent, so I appreciate that he at least banned them. Yeah, that he well, saw I, it and he and he took the initiative to ban them. He just he, he he's just a sweet summer child who didn't know how to clear message history. Yeah, well, I just purged, like, the last 200 messages on the server. I was like, boom, gone, bye. You should just do what I do and delete the general chat and make a new general chat. 
Yeah, but that's a pain in the ass. I would have I would have stabbed a bitch. Like I I would hate to lose all that history. Ask bots me, me too, but of your general chat, I'm pretty sure. That sounds really cool. Do they like, have yeah. my general chat goes this goes like back to 2017. Like there's history in there. Riley, you're you're aware of the various amount of demi goons slash uh, trigger warning raids that happened in my server, right? Yeah, because you you frequent like 4chan and incel core, so obviously you're yeah. gonna get raided. <laughs> there are times like it would. It's always like dozens of people at once joining my server, just spamming like animal abuse or like. Just like it's uh swear, you know, like not swear words, slurs and shit. Swear so words. Were, I had to <laughs> people just swear. <laughs> they kept saying shit. It was awful. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't even begin to describe how awful it was. Um, one no, of them said cunts. Like, I I almost died. They they they're spamming really awful things and like sexually harassing people on my server, which was just awful. So I had to add a verification system. Um, I was wondering, it's other Discord bots, and I've tried to look for this on Google and Reddit and found nothing, but I'm wondering if there are Discord bots that exist that literally just ban users if they say certain words. Yes, and actually there's new content moderation tools on Discord now that, that can do that, as far as I know. I just want to, like, I just want anyone who says the hard R N word except for my good friend Melody XO, uh, to get banned immediately. What about Inside Zoidberg? You can't forget him. Hey, uh, real quick, is anyone else like hearing each other like cut in and out and sort of roboting out a little bit? No, it's it's everyone except you. It's not it's not your connection. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So I'm not tripping then. No, you are. You are tripping. Are, are tripping. <laughs> it's it's on it, your it's end. You. It's on your end. You're fine. Oh, uh, all right, all right, all right. Well, because like everyone was sort of roboting out for a second and cutting out a little bit. So, oh, sure. It's not. It's not normal for everyone else in a call to be roboting out. Usually, well, usually, I can't hear usually it's, it's your fault. Well, usually I can't hear. I can't hear me. Even even though even so, like I don't think most of the time you're ever in a circumstance where everyone can start roboting at once. Yeah, thanks for killing the fucking flow, Mo. Jesus Christ. Sorry. I don't know how to do a goddamn podcast. No, I do, I do, I do. I just I forget uh, like everything we were saying. We were having like such a good conversation and now I've just completely Yeah, you were talking about no, you all were talking Yeah, you were talking about hard N word. Yes, I was saying I was saying you can't ban the hard R N word because what about inside Swedberg? He's he's not allowed to say it. <laughs> How dare you? I think you there are bots that you can exclude it from banning certain people. Uh, from like you can you can have a, a whitelist of people that are allowed to say whatever they want or whatever. I don't know. Realistically, like I don't really. It it's a it's a small price I'm willing to pay to to not let Melody XO say the N word. Melody XO is black, by the way. You can't cancel me. Dun dun dun. I, wait wait. Would it be more racist if I? ban the n-word completely or if i made a role in my discord server specifically for black people the role was just called black and black people just make it the hard the hard. word make the role the hard r no yeah <laughs> and make yeah, a role hard r superstar the n-word pass the, the the name already exists give them the n-word pass role i, I oh, think it would be much i think it would be much funnier if i gave them a role that just said black black <laughs> That well, might yeah. be a little bit racist, though, because then you're labeling people like by skin color. Then yeah, and then you're also taking a server where you get constantly raided, and then telling them having who's a role black. that marks down your marginalized <laughs> people. Yeah. <laughs> no, obviously I wouldn't actually do that, but I think it would be funny. <laughs> I think you could do like hidden roles or something, maybe. Um, if that's the case, I have a lot of those. Um, because I'm fat is the joke. I have hidden roles. Oh, uh, gross. <laughs> there's um, what's I gonna say? There's a there's a server called Africord, and it's a, <laughs> a black <laughs> Africord. There's uh, it's a Discord server that's only for black people, and it's Smash Bros. It's black. It's a black Smash community server, and <laughs> I tried I tried to join it just to like see what the fuck was going on in there. And um, 
there was that you literally have to verify your blackness yeah. to get into the chat. You have to post the, a picture. You have to post a picture of your hand or like you yeah. next to a piece of paper that yeah. has um, your username on it. There's a couple subreddits like that too. Oh, okay. So you don't have to face dox yourself. No, you no. just have to skin dox. But yeah, I mean, I guess to, I could. You have to have your username written, like either on your hand or like next to your hand or whatever. I think if I asked one of my black friends, uh, "Hey, can you just hold your hand next to this piece of paper with my username?" They would know exactly what was going on and not be happy about it. Hey, so, someone like Ivor or something. Maybe, or I could just get. I could get a. I could get a black internet friend. Even though there are pictures of Demi Gloom <laughs> on the internet, and you are very obviously a white person. It's a coincidence. No, man. It's just I'm, a I'm, coincidence. I'm one ninth black, bro. Yeah. What course. if? What if that Discord is just like you know has been infiltrated by nothing but like you know like white leftists or like alt right trolls and stuff, and it's like er everyone just pretends to be black, but that like that's sort of like the the gimmick of the site or the. The Discord is everyone's sword just like trolling one another. Yeah, you have to be able to prove that you're black. Holy shit. I just <laughs> well, I just yeah, realized if, I left that... I've I just realized my oven's been on for like two hours this whole time. Oh <laughs> <laughs> nothing's in it, so it's fine, but it's just a ways to be like just sure nothing's black. in it. This is not the first time this has happened. <laughs> Are you sure your stepsister's not stuck in there? Oh, that's a little dark. Zepro, help me. I'm stuck in the oven. <laughs> I'm stuck in the oven. <laughs> the oven just like screams of pure agony. <laughs> like, this isn't sexy at all. This is traumatic. <laughs> this right, is not like Pornhub right said it would be like at all. Ugh. All right, let's not so, elaborate too much on people in ovens. I wasn't Jesus even Christ. going. What I wasn't fuck, even Debbie? going there. What the fuck, Debbie? That's fucking really dark. Holy shit! <laughs> it took me a hot minute to, to process too. I was making Pornhub jokes and stuff. So and was you... I. So was I. <laughs> I don't know. Holy I don't shit. know. <laughs> God damn. Anyway, this is, this anyway. Probably my, this is the most home. problematic appearance I've ever made. I'm cutting out everything that I've said. <laughs> oh no! You gotta leave that shit in. That's just too oh, funny. you can't stop because Mo records on his side too. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't cut my shit out. It's just funny to say that. Nicholas Demi Gloom Fuentes, how you doing? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, my name is Nicholas Gurr, but my friends call me Nick. Oh, oh my god! They, they, usually, they usually say my last name though, so, so I, I prefer to be called that. Gotcha. Okay, Mister Gurr. Um. Anyway, so so I no, might you, be you, you gotta you gotta say my. My shortened first name and then my last name. Oh man, it, I would if I could, but I'm I'm too stupid to do that. So you know, I can't. I, I I'm unable to uh, pronounce people's first and last names in rapid succession. So I'm sorry, but I just don't have the ability to do so. Damn, I didn't know so you were anyway. so cognitively impaired. Uh, yeah, yes, he did. <laughs> anyway, so I might be moving soon to like another town nearby and. My brother's super, super jazzed about it, but he's uh, moving a little bit too quicker, too quickly than that I want to, because uh, he wants to move out in like a couple of weeks. And I'm all like, dude, I got to save us some money first and like get all this job shit situated and all that stuff. And not like by situated, I mean, we got to have Internet like at the time that we move in there. Because, like, I'm not about to lose my job or take off for a week with no pay. Like, we just, like, over my job right now, we just switched to a new clock-in system. And it gives us a uh, uh, paid time off, PTO, for the amount that you, uh, the length that you've been there. And I've been there a year, so I get a week off, right? Wow, a full week? Yeah. Holy shit, wow. It's not, to, yeah, it's, it, uh, maybe that's a... Uh, Nothing compared to like what regular people get at better jobs, but I'm at least grateful for it. I'm I'm I I'm think happy. I have get... PTO, but I have no idea. To be completely honest with you. Oh, okay. Uh, like actually, rarely I ever get PTO or any of my jobs like this and uh, my warehouse job in 2009, 2010. 
Uh, well, I'm in the healthcare me... union, so I, I assume the union gets us pretty good stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do have that, so that's good. I would definitely check up on that. But, uh, yeah, I'm fucking hopefully moving soon, and we'll have better internet. I'll be able to start green screening my shit, and when I get a better graphics card and all that, I'll be able to stream crazy ass uh crazy ass freaking resolutions and speeds and all that shit and uh, i found out something the other day my buddy told me the reason why like i have such a uh, bad quality stream sometimes is because apparently twitch caps your resolution at like yep. a certain rate if you're not a partner and i didn't know that because it's random like, actually it's even worse it is so it's not yeah. even fucking set so maybe even sometimes i'll be able to stream at even 720 60 fps sometimes and other times it'll be i a... won't be able to so they have uh what what they call source quality which is like the the quality that you're using whatever that is like the highest quality and that's reserved for the big dogs but sometimes lower streamers will get that and it's just fucking random. It's like throwing a fucking dart at the board, you know? Yeah, It's like, cool, one day I'll have high resolution, one day, like, it's capped at 480. And it's, it's like, like a roll, it's like a gotcha game. You gotta get the ultra-rare resolution. Yeah, that... if, you're a partner, if you're a partner, you get the you get the source quality. If you're an affiliate, it's random. If you're not an affiliate, get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's... See, that's what I've been thinking of. Like, you know, it's... It's such a hard time trying to make it on Twitch and all that. And there's like great ways to monetize on there and all that if you care about that stuff. But if I go to you now or if I go to YouTube or even if I go somewhere else, um, my quality's fucking awesome. Like everywhere, like yeah. with, with like little to no problems. And that's a little bit demoralizing. Like as much as I, I'd hate to walk away from you know, my 960 something viewers or my uh, followers on, uh, on Twitch, man, I'd rather have quality streams and all that all the time. Cause that's, now, that's how I many think followers of it. those would you say are active like 10? Actually, like, a, 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 a if I streamed at decent hours, if it weren't so fucking hot, man, I would be streaming in the middle of the day. And a lot of my old school active, uh, followers would show up. And when I was streaming at night, I get the Aussie and uh, uh, United Kingdom like a bunch. Sometimes European. I I, I have like active uh, users. It's just not like all the time, which is kind of a bummer. But it's also the reason why I'm trying to move because we can get good uh, uh, fiber internet over there and shit. And I'll uh, you know my quality will be like on point all the time so yeah when you when you stream late at night you get your your foreign fans and sometimes kang and or paul oh yeah 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 like all the insomniacs like i i love my insomniac my insomniac streams man those are always some of the best ones because you know all the old all my older friends and shit like come out of the woodwork i don't know i've been youtube I, yeah, I've been thinking maybe I should just go ahead and just switch full on to YouTube because I, I think that I would like that a lot more. And I think if I streamed on my uh, uh, if I if I streamed on my gaming channel, my gaming streams and shit and uh, just like put all my my energy and stuff just into YouTube and junk, I think I'd have a better time doing that instead of on Twitch. Twitch just seems like an uphill battle that I don't think that I'm uh, going to win at. And, uh, well, because Twitch has yeah. no discoverability, it's not a platform. Well, YouTube is also an uphill battle unless you make a uh, Breaking Bad Nintendo DS title screen. See, that's the thing, though. You know, like, I, I think that people then, you know, it, it only takes like a little while to really, really, like, you know, just start like getting the snowball effect going on where. And shit and all you need like really is a good shout out or stuff and Do I'll keep know, cutting like... out for like five seconds yeah. at a time for yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. oh, damn. Well I I'm I'm recording just fine on here on my end, but I guess it happens sometimes. But my uh my bars were going up and down because my internet here sucks also. 
like this whole like entire week like i've been wanting to stream for like this entire week and uh my isp is doing a bunch of maintenance so all this week it's been no being able to play any multiplayer games at all uh anything that has an internet connection fucking gets constantly disrupted like i try Oh, from of exhibit A. <laughs> exhibit what? I said it was Exhibit A because you cut out again, right? As you said that sometimes oh. things disconnect. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, you know, on my recording, it doesn't really catch me like uh, cutting out a lot. But anyway, no, yada, your yada. recording doesn't matter <laughs> unless it fails. We're using Craig, so. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well. Anyway. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, I, I just need to move somewhere where better internet. I think I've gotten all I can out of this place, and I'm so sick of it. Like I, I'm, it, it's like it, it's it's too far. Like I live in the midpoint between my parents' house and stuff, where I can just go and hang and chill all the time, or uh, town. But town's just too far to walk. It's like I'm three miles away from uh, from uh, my town, and it's just too damn fucking hot uh, to be walking all the way over here there's no uber no lyft uh no no delivery services of any kind uh no one wants to come over here and uh like do their little like 7-eleven 7-eleven uh, deliveries and shit and it pisses me off man because you know someone can make a a decent buck if they charged like a reasonable price for like taxi service in this freaking town and no one really wants to do it because everyone wants to charge an arm and a leg. Like an old high school buddy, he uh, he has something like that where he just gets in his car, drives people around. He wants 20 to fucking town and 20 back. And like it's it's three fucking miles. I just need to pick up like, you know, some some soda or, or fucking some snacks or something. Like, dude, am I really fucking paying 20 bucks for your bullshit, bro? Like, dude, fuck off. I, I just hate it so would much. Just go around to like all the gas stations and just like hand out like business cards and just be like, "Yo, I'll, I'll keep." And they weren't like and, it wasn't like an actual business. It was just like his number and like you know rides. And, yeah, and he see, would that would hand be great. And and people would just call him up and he'd, he'd go wherever. See, if I had a car right now, I, I would totally fucking do that, man. That would be so great. Uh, I just uh, I don't have a car right now at the moment. If I if I move, I'll be able to save up money a lot easier, a lot better. And uh, I'll be able to get my investments going again like I used to, because that sort of helped a little bit getting some money flow in there from that uh, from that uh, section. And I'll be able to do shit again. Until then, I'm living daily paycheck to daily paycheck. And it fucking sucks, man, because. Uh, I wish I had a higher paying job. This is like the second week or third week in a row I bitched about my job. So I'm sorry, everyone who's uh, listening to that and just go like Mo's on his fucking fuck his job soap box again. I'm just, uh, I don't know. I'm frustrated with my job and I don't want to work it anymore, but I got to. And I don't know, you know, it's like. I, I don't know how our like forefathers or even like us a generation or two ago were able to really hunker down and just say, I fucking hate my job, but for X, I'll go ahead and do that. It doesn't feel like my generation and, and all generations after mine, because I'm the last of the Gen Xers now, as far as I'm being classified as. It's like all of our generations from mine onward, uh, just, uh, we, we just... We we can't wrap our fucking minds around just working this fucking job that we hate, and it's just fucking crazy, man. Because it, it kills it kills the job market, and it also kills the motivation to enter the workforce. You know, because all you really want to do is just have a good job, right? Like everyone needs a good job, right? And uh, I just don't see that in my generation anymore, and I don't see it in the other generations anymore. Like the gig economy yeah, is fun. Yeah, well, like it's like if you have a good job or you're a part of a solid union or something, I can see the I, I can see it being a lot more different. But as far as everything else, like, you know, living in a fucking right to work state, 
it's like a job it's it's kind of like these people use your job and they use life as a carrot on a stick and they just dangle life in front of you and all you have to do is just get a job and you can have this fucking carrot but every time you do what they say the carrot the the the, the stick just gets longer and longer and longer it just feels fucking impossible to obtain the said carrot you know because like I, I think a lot of people's problems would be alleviated if they would just like if it weren't so hard to get the fucking carrot like I, i'm willing to get the job i'm i'm willing to wash the dishes you know be the janitor be the fucking tech guy or customer service dude if i actually saw like a future in work and right now well, as yeah. it stands well, i just minimum can't. wage is whatever it is in your state right not not super high i'd imagine and yeah, the cost of living is still 750 jesus yeah and cost of living is like 32 dollars. you know like cool great fight for 15 and then the fucking cost of living is 32 dollars yeah so, it, it fucking doesn't feel and it doesn't feel like we're ever going to get a pay raise at this time i mean the the, the people like it feels like if you look in government and you look in politics right now, it feels like both parties are totally 100% against this. Yeah, they'll pay lip service to it, but when it really comes down to it, um, it's obvious that none of them are really truly fighting for it. Like, notice how Bernie and AOC and all of them sort of clammed up on the whole thing, and we really don't hear about Fight for 15 anymore, and it, it's uh, disheartening. Yeah, I mean, a lot of states are, are doing it. Not all of them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, the problem is, like, it's not going to happen federally right now, especially when they just fucking got rid of abortion rights. So, yeah. But I mean, Bernie is constantly doing labor stuff. So, I mean, he's, it's not like he's done fighting. It just, it feels like that sometimes. The whole platform but... is labor, 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 you know, like trying to get the, you know, the working, working class better rights, better pay, better, you know, benefits. I guess it just feels like that to me. Maybe I'm just being kind of cynical and like, uh, you know, getting anything done at the state or federal level or even local level. It feels like I really am pulling cat teeth and, uh, you know, they're all feral. And it's just like, dude, it feels like an impossible task. You know what I mean? And it, it doesn't feel like a, well, like, you know, I'm, I'm used to my voice not being heard, you know, in one form or another, but, now it just feels like uh, it's it's more public now that you're being more publicly by our so-called leaders, our representatives disregarded. And uh, I, I just don't see the light at the end of the tunnel, unfortunately. And this shitty attitude that they have is now trickling down to us because inflation hasn't even hit its peak yet. And we haven't even seen uh, peak inflation problems yet you see it every day that you go to your grocery store like i see it all the time when i go to mine you know i'm like off and on like i've never seen the shelves so barren than now you know and i don't know yeah how long this is going to last but like with with all these bill gates type people just eat the bugs live in the pod you'll own nothing and you'll be happy uh fucking types uh you know, I'm told it's a conspiracy theory, but then they keep fucking repeating those same lines, and then maybe we should uh, just live in a pod and eat the bugs. Like, fuck the bugs. What's, fuck what's the so pods. bad about living in a pod and eating the bugs? Like, uh, at the end of the day, fuck that. If we could all be happy living in pods and eating bugs, why We're not? not though. I mean, it wouldn't be so bad if I knew that the people who were promoting this shit would be eating the same bugs, living in the same pods. But, you know, these fucking types of the ones that'll be eating steak and burgers and just like regular normal people food. Well, and like it's it's like it's really insulting to us, the lower classes, like you never feel more lower class than when you hear a celebrity or like a tech billionaire fucking speak in public. Like you, you never you you're reminded every so often of, about how low you actually are on the totem pole and these these myths of opportunity 
are constantly being dangled in front of us, you know, like, uh, yeah, when, when people would talk about wealth inequality, this has been a bad issue for fucking generations now. Like people kind of think that maybe it's just been a, a problem for a little while. Like, no, dude, you you go back to like, you know, like we, we haven't really we've had such a terrible uh, wealth and income inequality problem since like the roaring 20s, possibly even like you know much worse like before then because like you can't really contrast compare i guess uh economic situations in the the 2020s to like someone in the 1800s because it's it's apples and fucking grapefruits at that point you know it's just it's just not the same and so you know you, you try to look at it you try to gleam some hope from it but I don't know, man. At the end of the day, maybe I'm just losing what remains of my faith in humanity and society. Anyway, I'm I'm done yammering on. Uh, uh, what what are y'all thoughts? Demi, Welcome we'll to Moe's black pilled corner. I'm trying not to be black pilled, man. I I fucking really am. It's just like the other day, I had one of the best feeling days of like the last like five years, and I tweeted out something. Man, I just woke up in a real great fucking mood. I hope this lasts. And the like the next the next day it was starting to keep going, but it was fading a little bit and then it's just boom, boom, boom. And I don't know, man. It's just like uh it makes you so sick at heart. Nice. Nice. No, I mean Demingloom, what do you think about what Mo was just saying, which is what we were gonna ask before we got on that tangent? Uh I don't know. <laughs> Great. Robin, what do you life, think? Life sucks. Yeah, I mean I'm 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 in a well paid job, right? You know, I, I'm in fucking healthcare union, like they're getting us raises. But still it's like before tax I'm making like thirty thousand a year. And then after tax I'm walking home with like twenty five. And like twenty five is really not a lot. Like, sure, if I had 25 in my pocket right now, like, yeah, that'd be a lot. But $25,000 a year is, like, not still not great, but it's a lot better than most people still. Yeah. It's just... Fuck, man. Like, the... the uh... Let me go ahead and get back on my mic here instead of just, like, right on the side because I was getting some to drink. <laughs> um... If you look at what we classify the poverty line and then the extreme poverty line, it's the the bar is set so absolutely low for both of them. And then when we look at what we think, what we uh, consider successful, you know, a working class, you know, it's almost at a hundred fucking thousand bucks a, a, a year. And yeah. I know it's gone up since then. But the bar for uh, being uh, considered, quote unquote, one percenter is actually not too far from 100,000 a year. So the fact that bar that barrier of a uh, one percenter entry is not as high as we perceive it to be. It's just that our uh, our wealth acquisition, our, our ability to acquire fucking wealth, to acquire money is <clears throat> excuse me it's it's so impeded by the powers that be by the businesses uh uh, uh you know ever since we've ever since we've okayed corporate personhood to become a thing you know that famous line by mitt romney corporations are people my friend uh that that really did signify sort of a I think the end of uh, my chance to live the American dream, even though I think that dream was killed a long time ago, I, I think that was, uh, I think that was the signal that was officially dead. And that you go into the woods. I fucking hate the woods and I love the and internet. Just, just be a hairy man in the woods. You know? <laughs> I, I would, but you know, I, I feel like I paid enough taxes and I, I worked long enough to, enjoy the benefits of living in a first world society you know like it i hate to think that in order to achieve like a are we first standard, world though well i mean compared to a lot of other places yeah i mean i, I would you know it's slowly moving down. 
it's it slowly is. getting back to third world. We we were like yeah. we're like second second world right now, you know. We're like, second world. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in between. Yeah. Yeah, our, our, uh, you know, in, I, I think it was uh, during the Obama presidency and Obama really uh, lashed out, which I thought was a really good idea from him to do. But our credit rating uh, was dropped as a country. And I'm not blaming Obama for it or anything. This just happened during his administration. I don't think it's his fault or anything. But our credit rating as a country got fucking struck down. I think we are AAA to now we're double A. And, uh, you know, that that's just that boggles my mind that the, we're, we're double A is a bigger battery. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it is a bigger battery, but, you know, still like and uh, I, I guess this is the recession cast uh, right now. I didn't intend to talk about the recession or anything, but, you know, I, I, I freak out at you think things are bad now wait a couple of months wait till this winter because uh right now here in texas uh i forgot what corporation it was that was uh doing this but they're uh oh, i i get they're, they're lowering the temperatures they're they're lowering the temperatures on a lot of thermostats and like hotels and businesses and so the aircon or Aircon or, or something like that. It, it's the Texas uh, power grid people. And that's starting to happen too. Uh, or Air, Air, Aircot. Uh, Aircot or uh, Aircot as Texas. What is happening? Air Are you having a stroke? Hey, Debbie, you want to. <laughs> or not Debbie. Mo, you want to turn your AC off real quick? I'm sorry. You you cut out. What'd you say? <laughs> I said, do you want to turn your AC off real quick, Mo? No. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking hot in here. I can't do it without the AC. As you're talking, we just keep hearing. Like yeah, I know because my. Yeah, I know because my internet is shitty right now, and it was it was doing fine till like just a minute ago. I'm watching my voice connected bar go up and uh, up up and down, and we'll, we'll just I'll just have to power. We'll just have to power through it. Uh, but yeah, uh, ERCOT asked Texans to conserve power for the second time this week to help avoid emergency conditions. And in California, that's happening too. There was a an electric company that was uh, that the headline said uh, they're begging Californians to uh, please ease up on charging your electric vehicles because it's overloading the grid in California. Wow. So that's fucking nuts. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah, uh, this this heat wave and, and the our infrastructure is failing, and I, I think uh, Robin's totally right. We are headed down the slope to towards uh, second class citizenry, but we're in America, and what what the what the fuck is going on? You know what the hell is happening? It's a, it's a dark. We're in a dark place. Just work hard, you know, and then you'll have... Yeah, like, just pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and then you'll yeah. you'll do it. It's so funny when celebrities say, like, you just need to work hard and, like, earn your money. And it's like, bitch, you came from a family of, like, a bunch of rich people. I'm not saying you didn't work hard, but, like, it's not like you did anything spectacular. You worked as hard as anyone else, and you just, you had rich parents. Yeah, I'm getting real fucking tired of seeing all these, uh, all these headlines like why the the working class isn't getting the raises and why that's a good thing, you know the going back to the eat the bugs live in the pod thing, you know like the you'll own nothing and be happy, you know these uh of uh, these alphabet organizations that aren't even you know affiliated with our government in any way, shape, or form, or they're constantly trying to advocate they're trying to push for uh changes to american uh it really pisses me off because i'm i'm tired of these fucking people who will not suffer who will not go without uh telling me and the rest of us that uh you need to go without so we can have it all i mean dude fuck you like we're already dealing like it's it's these fucking like a a, a, a offshoots the offspring of the fucking boomers they inherited their entitlement and this uh, this mentality that everything belongs to them because they are the mighty, the the superior, the the upper class. 
you know, in, in name and, you know, j- you know, in name and status, you know, it's just, I'm just so fucking tired of it. I'm tired of being low, you know, like, a, you know, uh, tear your gaze away from me. You are not worthy to see me and all this shit. Like it's, I'm, I'm sick of this fucking like a, I guess, rise of wannabe royalty in, in a, in, you know, in our democracy in our fucking representative constitutional Republic, you know, fuck off with this, man. I'm sick of these fucking classes. I'm, I'm just, I want everyone to just go the fuck away. I'm not advocating for class, ab- uh, you know, abolishment oh, or anything like that. You heard that. it. Mo says, get the gulags out. No, no, because like, I don't, I don't care if people are like a, but like you know are in a different class or anything i don't give a shit about that but i just i want the opportunity to be uh in those classes to be unimpeded because it shouldn't be a big deal if my fucking hairy nomad looking ass comes and moves into your fucking neighborhood and all i do is like you know stream and trade cryptocurrency like seriously fuck off man i wish i just i wish i just had money it would be really nice to just have money. That that would be not even cool. like billionaire money. Just like I don't know, just just a normal rich person money, you know? Yeah, like I I don't need, I don't need to like a. Uh, I don't need have, Bezos money, but like you know, like it, it would be nice to like have like a, like someone who's in their forties and has their shit together, like you know, are making like three or four hundred thousand bucks a year. I don't yeah, think it's too much. Yeah, that would be fucking great. I, I don't Ten think times that's... what I make. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think that's so much to ask to not stand in my way. And, you know, it feels like for every worker, there's at least five managers who were specifically put there by upper management to impede your progress. Like, I, I am tired of working for, like, I'm, I'm sick of feeling like I'm in a circus. And I'm another clown that has to uh, impress the the bigger clown in front of me. And I'm, you know, getting out of the little fucking clown car and stuff going, hey, you know, are you impressed yet? Can I have a sliver of 15 cents an hour? You know, come on. 15 more cents an hour? Come on. Ugh. It's not that I come want on. to pirate. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, it's, it's not like I want to pirate everything, but I fucking will if you make me. Uh, I mean, what do we do? Do we move to another country? What other countries that were, what other country can we possibly move to where it just doesn't suck as bad as here? You know, I mean, like there are Australia other seems kind of poggers. I don't know. Australia, don't they have big problems you know. right now? Oh, yeah, do they, they? they they have big problems. Their government's super authoritarian. So is New yeah. Zealand's, and you know, no, like, New Zealand's not bad. Isn't um, fuck, what's her name? Well, they're, they're they, prime they, minister. She's pretty good, right? Well, uh, I I actually haven't been reading up on uh, the prime Jacinda minister. Lady. It's just, I, I'm not uh, very happy with uh, the way that they handled lockdown and shit and uh, and all this other stuff. Um, I don't know that New Zealand and Australia are so far fucking out of the way, and I, I don't know. Like, uh, there's not many places to go to in Australia because it's like what. 20% inhabitable, uh, the rest 80% fucking desert. I don't know if I want to go live in the fucking desert, man. Let's go do it in the US. Uh, I practically live in a desert. Well, no, not so bad because it's I'm on the Gulf of Mexico here in Texas, so it's not so bad. If I were living in El Paso, I'd have to deal with more scorpions and spiders all the fucking time. And it's not, of, those aren't a big deal, really. I don't know, until you get stung by a bunch of them and it fucking sucks, or you get covered by tarantulas. Not a big yeah, that's that's not cool. Even like brown recluses, you're not gonna die. Ugh. That's, uh, you know uh, what? Biggest myth in the world is the fucking brown recluse bite shit. They're not gonna kill you. Whenever you see people like I, skin peeling off those pictures like that, it's it's someone who didn't, who got bit and it bled, and then they didn't clean it and it got infected. Oh, yeah. It's just people not being hygienic with their wounds. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was like you know 
they they fucking bitch you and then you have to go to the hospital or else your shit's about to rot off kind of like you know a rattlesnake bite no it makes you more susceptible uh, like their the saliva in their bite makes your your so there is venom but it's like it's a fucking tiny spider <laughs> so it's not really know. that bad but, but I don't like taking saliva, chances, though. Their saliva has a thing that makes you more susceptible to to bacterial infections, so people just don't clean it out. Grody. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, it is hot as shit uh, down here. How's the weather for y'all? Uh, how's it for you, Robin? What's the weather like there? I I don't even know anymore. I I feel hot all the time. It feels you just like it, fucking, it, you just feel hot all the time. Yeah, pretty much lately. Maybe I'm just like fat, I guess. Girl boss moment. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just a, like a fat person thing now, you know, or like a, oh. age is catching up with me or something. Like everything just feels hot. And I just like, I wish I can like rewind time to back when I was like twenty eight, twenty nine. I think I had a better handle on my age back then, but like now it's sort of like it's starting to freak me out a little bit because I, I I've been to the doctor a couple of times, but I didn't go through with the blood work. So, you know, I, I, I kind of freak out about that because I don't like needles. I have a bad irrational fear of needles. He, he's scared and, they're going to they're going to sneak in the vaccine if he tries to go get blood work. No, it's absolutely not. <laughs> no, it's absolutely not. Uh <laughs> Not that five G right in them. Oh god! <laughs> you're gonna take my blood, my DNA, the secret, make the secret Fauci out to you. Yeah, you're gonna take my blood and clone me. Then you're gonna kill me, replace me with my clone, and he's gonna be more subservient to the state. You know, the second <laughs> I come on here and I start talking about, you know, the the World Economic Forum is actually pretty cool. You know, I don't mind eating the bugs and living in the pods, and you know. I don't need stuff, you know, that's fine. You know, Bill Gates knows what he's talking about. Erp -a -derp -a -derp. That could I do that, shut down the show immediately and run as far away as you can from me. Because I'm a fucking clone. Mo, Mo Diggity becomes like a super fed. He's been cloned and bred specifically to try to convert us to subservism. You know, conformity to the state really isn't so bad, guys. You just need to do as you're told, you know? Lockdowns aren't so bad. Just wear your masks all the time. Herper derper der. Nah, you talk shit to me about the masks back in the day. The, <laughs> well, the no, stuff there. like, no, like, uh, I'm a little like, a uh, yeah, wear your mask, but like, you know, don't, don't like celebrate it. Like you're so happy that the state told you to do something and you're like happily comply like this. I think that's fucking like that stupid human weakness where like we just we just lick the boots uh whenever we're told to do so and this this feels I, like I one of those shit. like No, you know what? Be gay. That's fine. Just don't like celebrate it. Don't like don't like talk about it. I don't want to hear okay. about it. If my Come kid on. was gay, that's not cool. But you could be gay, that's fine. I don't think, you know, subservience to the state and, you know, just like, you know, being low-key homophobic are the same thing. <laughs> it's just, you're giving, you're giving me an energy, like the not in my backyard energy, you know, like. I don't think so. I don't think it's so bad. Like, you know, just like speaking out against the state really isn't like just, isn't like the worst thing to ever do. I just, I don't know. Oh, I mean. Ugh. You weren't you weren't as bad as Riley. Riley was really bad about it. <laughs> the fucking mask thing. It was literally like nobody should ever wear one, even at the beginning. And it was like, dude, chill, just wear one. Well, yeah, like a, I like I, I don't mind like wearing the mask though. To be honest, like near the end of lockdown, like a, it was still it was it was starting to get with me and fuck with me a little oh, bit because like one. every once in a while I'll like wear one. But, like, I don't do that all the time. It's just based, right? Like, why <laughs> wouldn't you? You're, like, you're not spreading bacteria. You're, you're in theory, it's, you know, it's not really protecting you from, like, the coronavirus, but it's, it's protecting you from other viruses. It's stopping you from spreading the coronavirus. It's stopping you from spreading other viruses. It's keeping your face hidden, like, from cameras. It's keeping, you know, it's, yeah. it's, 
it's a fashion item. It's a new fashion item that you can now wear, <laughs> right? Like you can now just like walk into buildings with a mask on your face, and it's chill. You can go to a bank with a mask on your face. <laughs> Ah, oh god, yeah. There was some <laughs> unintended consequences from like the popularization of masks, huh? Like uh, uh bank robberies did go up a little bit, crimes went a lot more unsolved because well the guy had a fucking had a mask on his face, man. I don't know who this is. I dude wonder is. if that was the economic climate causing more robberies and crimes and things, you know. Well, okay, you know, like a I definitely think that didn't help anything. Uh, I, I think, uh, but I, I do think that there are plenty of uh, criminals with brains and, you know, like uh, you get an expert on crime over there. Well, hey, this is a pretty good time to take advantage of this uh, lap of mask thing on your face because it obf obfuscates your face and your image and all that. And you're totally right. It does do all that. Um and there, there were some crimes and there were problems with trying to solve a lot of crimes too, especially in like high populated areas like the cities and stuff. Uh, but uh, I guess you sort of, you, you, you take the good with the bad, I suppose. But um, the thing that happened to me is like, I, I had that really, uh, I had a real terrible fucking panic and anxiety attack uh, during it. And this is how dead our society is. Because check mm -hmm. this out, right? I was in HEB. Uh, I got a little stoned before I went in there, so I know that this didn't help anything. Uh, but, like, uh, the hit I took was a little bit gnarly. Like, my brother didn't... Uh, my other brother. Uh, he didn't clear out the pipe like you usually do. So I got his fucking stale smoke plus my fucking hit. And it was just a nasty fucking hit. So I went in there just, uh, you know, that sort of, uh, you know, that kind of baked where I'm like, mm -hmm. I shouldn't be in a public space right now. Everything's just a little bit too real. And, uh, I was, <laughs> it's in, all too real. It's yeah. Too I was, real. In, <laughs> I was at HEB. I was talking to my brother and he says, uh, all right, I'll be over here real quick. Just looking at the bread. And I was looking at other shit and I looked over them. Him and his fiance were there. And then I looked over like it feels like just a second later. And then him and his fiance were gone. And really the truth of the matter is I was just fucking way baked and I was checking out the breads and stuff. And that was like, oh, my God, I live in a simulation. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. And I started panicking real bad. And uh, I found them. And then I just started having like the worst fucking panic attack. I had my mask on and that was uh, really uh, blocking my breathing because like I need two things when I have a panic attack. I need cold water because water always calms me down for some reason or another. And uh, I need air because I need to be able to be allowed to breathe. Right. Because if not, I'm going to start screaming and having like what feels like a fucking heart attack. And, uh, I was, uh, I started choking cause my, uh, like when I panic, my stomach gets into knots. Right. And I started like feeling like I was fucking choking and I couldn't fucking breathe. I ran to the H E B bathroom and I was coughing and I was on my knees and the whole while, staring at me no one fucking looked panicked no one was staring at you you cut out again oh sorry the 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 customers the people over at the uh the checkout lines they were just fucking staring at me man like fucking no but nothing and i got up and then they all just went back to talking to each other and like you know like if, if this were at like i guess the beginning of the pandemic or something when we were really all hardcore masking up maybe there would be like a sense of like panic or someone asking me if I'm okay. Nobody asked me if I was okay. No one seemed to really fucking mind. In fact, I might be overestimating uh, the amount of people who are looking at me because life just went on. I'm just a dude choking to fucking death in the middle of fucking the store. And I get into the, I get into the, uh, uh, the bathroom. I, I calm down a little bit. I go outside, I have a vape, I, I, I go into the store again, immediately, boom, it fucking starts. Like, I had to go into the store three or four fucking times 
And then finally, when I got to my brother, they were already done shopping. I was like, oh, fuck. Well, I know how I spent my afternoon just having a panic attack at H-E-B. Ta-da! And it was just shitty and just, uh, I guess that's, I guess that's why I'm a little bit hesitant to put on my mask all the time, just because I remember that. That's in the back of my head some, sometimes. Yeah, but if you saw someone, like, choking, are you, you going to go up and say, hey, are you all right? Well, I just expected, like, people, well, like, somebody would or something, just yeah, out of concern. Have? No, fuck no. Well, there you fucking go. What the fuck? Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not mad at them or anything <laughs> like that. It's just that, you know, I was sort of led to believe that there would be a lot more concern from like, you know, the talking heads and social media, the media and everyone else that this was going to probably happen. But nothing really happened. And everyone was just kind of, oh, yeah. So that was the second time I got fingered in the ass. And then, you know, they just fucking walked off, <laughs> you know, so like. That's fine. Uh, I I don't I don't hold anything against them for you know not coming up to me. Sir, are you okay? And you know that that was it. It was just I don't know. Uh, it, that that kind of freaked me out a little bit too. Driving back, I had a series of panic attacks that day because of that. That was fucking freaky. I was gonna say at the beginning. Uh, so eating and drinking does help with panic. Because it's it's like uh, it triggers a thing in your brain. Because in in nature, all right, here we go. I feel like Joe. Whoa. Rogan. Yeah, Whoa. I feel like, yeah, I feel like Joe Rogan. <laughs> you going you going to hawk some alpha brain uh, supplements to me? No, in, in nature, we only eat and drink when we're like in a safe environment. Like you can't you can't just start like chomping down on like a fresh kill or like drinking out a river if there's like a predator nearby. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that so that's you, that's how the water makes me feel. It makes me feel safe. Yeah, because once it hits your stomach, your your body's like, oh, okay, I'm drinking or like I'm eating, so like we're we're safe. Uh, I I used to be real bad about the uh, the simulator or the simulation uh, thing. I was like, dude, are we in a simulation? I mean, it would be. It wouldn't surprise me that society is nothing but an experiment and we're all just guinea pigs, you know. But then again, I would think that maybe uh, the people who would build a simulation would probably build a better one than this shit because this fucking sucks, man. Like I was actually watching The Flash earlier and I was thinking to myself, you know, wouldn't it be cool if we kind of had some of this technology? Like, why don't we really have um you know like the these like young scientists and like you know these young science groups and stuff like we have some of them but i i just i i think that they're uh, just all for show and you know we're we're really just we 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 think we're so advanced when really it hasn't been that long since we've come from the VCR to DVD you know what i mean well you know how we like we make movies and we draw and we like do all that and that's like we're, we're creating little 2D worlds. What if there's someone in the 4D world that's like creating us? Whoa. <laughs> I think he needs Holy to do a better shit. job than this shit. These fucking like, people, man. We're a three dimensional drawing in a 4D world. Mm -hmm. You people are always like, these people like are so atheist in science that they like come up with all these existential ideas and then you realize you're basically just describing the existence of a god without saying the word god sure. like I'm, I'm the agnostic, concept motherfucker. oh you're agnostic you're fucking agnostic that's gay yeah no it's based <laughs> why do you Wait, identify what is, it, what as is agnostic? agnostic again it's you riley oh okay yeah i don't know demi can you prove or disprove gods for me um i can the one thing that i can disprove like on the spot is the afterlife but I think everyone with a brain agrees with me that there's no afterlife, right? Depends on what you mean by afterlife. Like, human sentience is not metaphysical. Therefore, upon death, when our sentience is discontinued, we, we don't exist anymore. <laughs> sentience is discontinued. This service is discontinued. <laughs> yeah, like there, there might not be a heaven, but like 
there could be like paranormal there could be you know there could be all sorts of things so you believe in like spirit though like like humans have spirits and souls and shit not like necessarily. it goes beyond the body you know how many drugs robin has done of course she believes in spirits there could be spirits i think it's ridiculous i would get on that one huh if there are spirits, I don't think there's any way we didn't know. I don't think there's spirits that would be um, observable. No, ghosts are real. Oh, shut the fuck up, Riley. <laughs> they are! I would prefer, out of all afterlife options, where, you know, you just fade to black and you just cut off like in The Sopranos during mid uh, mid middle of your sentence. I the would credits pref- start rolling. I kind of would prefer, <laughs> like, you know... Like the life energy, sort of like going to the earth and sort of experiencing the, uh, the the spirit of the planet, and then being reborn or reincarnated as like you know a flower or plant, sort of a, uh, uh, experiencing the circle, the cycle of life through like a new set of lenses. That would be great. Just I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I even believe that anymore. Like it's, I like to think that could be the case you know, all that comes from the earth goes back to the earth and all that, but I, I, I don't know if we have that anymore. I think that Yo, might be dead. Do, do you guys want to hear my, um, the explanation that my edgy 13 slash 14 year old self gave for ghosts and spirits and shit? Yeah. <laughs> sure. So, I, especially like during um, my, you know, the my loneliest years, that being those being eighth and ninth grade and of middle school, out. yeah, from exactly <laughs> <laughs> that awkward moment between birth and death. But um, my <laughs> when I was like thirteen or fourteen, I got super into like simulation theory and like the parallels that like Earth and reality as we know it has to like computer programs and software, and I just like had this shower thought i was like bro ghosts are just like the remaining code of people <laughs> Whoa. Like, like if you're like like picture like just for example like gta 5 right like and you like uh a character died right let's just say hypothetically like you killed you killed franklin in gta 5 so franklin no longer exists canonically but somehow you perform some sort of glitch that brings him back and not in full, just like in some part, or like you spawn an audio, like you spawn like an audio clip, or like some sort of image of him. And it's funny that you mentioned the one character that can't potentially die at the end. I don't <laughs> no, fucking you know. You have dude. the option. You have the no, option. Franklin, can. Franklin can't die. But you can kill yeah, Michael. Can. You can kill Trevor, but you can't kill Franklin. Oh wait, no, 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 because you you play as Franklin. No, yeah, no. yeah. The, in the final mission, you play as Franklin. You either kill Michael, kill Trevor, or kill all your enemies yeah man you fucking dumbass I've, i haven't played i haven't played through the whole story mode either way so there's a character in a video game that's it's like canonically dead according to where you are in the story right and the character cannot spawn unless you perform a set of glitches or through some sort of like exploit that isn't intended you can summon or spawn or i guess view like Carol, remaining right? Shut the fuck ghosts, up. The people... Ghosts are the exploit of life. You people are just ruining everything life. I say. Basically, like, if a character is dead canonically, right, in a story mode of a video game, that doesn't mean they don't exist within the game. It just means that they're no longer playable or, like, summonable or, like, present. They're no longer present, you know what I mean? But they still exist somewhere in the game's code. And, like, when I was, like, 14, I was like, bro... When people die, they're it's like they don't exist to the story mode anymore, but like the code still exists, and that's like what ghosts are. It's like like if you hear like the voice of like your dead grandparents, it's like you spawned like an audio clip from their remaining <laughs> lingering code. That's pretty I was like, I was like convinced of this for like a solid two months. Then I was like, that's fucking stupid. Well, and that's why we can do like cloning, right? Because we could just copy and paste their code and create a new one. Uh, in theory, yeah. Yeah, I mean, DNA is just code, right? Technically, if you want to get technical, yeah, DNA is really just like a set of numbers. 
like like a DNA can be broken down into a set of numbers and letters. And if we can develop like a stronger understanding of it, we could and you know, if artificial intelligence manages to reach the level that humanity has reached, like we could literally like genetic engineering could reach a very like science Terrible. fiction level. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 it's not what you think. It's not what you think. I want to oh. live in a world where like we really do uh focus on like genetic engineering and transhumanism and stuff like because i want like my end goal is to have like the ghost in the shell sort of uh, ending where we could just like you know plug our consciousness into another fucking like shell or something and live life like that we we theoretically don't have to die we can just keep going on but it's all optional like no one has to be you know, like a yeah, everyone can be like normal, everyday, organic. I, I just, I want to know what it's you know like being like a, you know, being on a fucking spaceship going to Mars or Saturn or something. I, I want to see that shit. Right. Like, you want to? There's just oh, no sorry, explanation but... for uh, for consciousness, really. Like, it's just it's just it's a, a social thing. construct in a way. Not that, that's not to say it doesn't exist and it's not based on any sort of like objective physical reality, but they're yeah. like sentience and like human, like you know, like the human sentience and humanity of the brain is definitely like socially constructed, at least our understanding of it. Kind of in the way that like everything's socially constructed, I guess, but yeah, it's it's just like the fact that we like. Are are aware that we are here, <laughs> you know. In fact, that's... the fact that we can have desires that go outside of our instincts, our survival instincts. The fact that, like, the very fact that humans sacrifice themselves to save others, just that very, like, the very basic level of empathy that we experience is very fascinating and almost horrifying in a way. Yo, you know what's crazy? What? what? Like cloning, bro. Like you had mentioned it <laughs> <laughs> briefly. Like cloning um, and stuff, man. It's like, <laughs> dude, it just blows my mind, bro. Cloning's like, like crazy because they just like take the thing and they make it again. God, like Riley, how high <laughs> are you right now? I'm not high at all. That's the funny thing. I'm just tired. <laughs> well, and here it's it's already a consumer product. Like you can already get your cat or dog cloned. You could do that right now. Like, bro, remember Dolly the sheep? Hold on, we we could do that. I haven't heard anything about that in Hell ages. Yeah. I heard it's that they were expensive, but yeah, you could do it. Like, I I want like cloning to be like one hundred percent funded, like we fund fucking NASA. That's that's like another thing that I really do want is I I want the clone army and shit. Like maybe maybe I've watched too much sci fi in my lifetime, but I want the the clone army, the transhumanism, the the ghost in the shell. I'll even take the Matrix. So, you know that that might actually be kind of fun, but uh, I don't want to get stuck in the goo pod. That'll be a little bit weird. I would like a. I think I would be happier with the Futurama version of the Matrix. I think that's a lot cooler and a lot more humane. Bro, you know you know what I've I've realized over the years. What what. Through through transhumanism, teleportation is actually possible and very simple. Yes, you see, because it's just a matter of electronics and distance and uh, tra travel distance. You know, with the right. uh, with the signal. The human body once once we reach a state of transhumanism, where human sentience can be used to um, control and navigate the world from the perspective of anything but the human body, the human body becomes entirely obsolete because there are machines that can move and do everything that the human body can. And if, you're, if your sentience is able to control and tap into that sort of thing, then you're able to hypothetically have an unlimited amount of bodies and senses. And, you know, I guess, um, what's the word? What is the word? Um, shells? Uh, vessels. Vessels. There, there's an unlimited amount of possible vessels for your, your own sentience. So theoretically, if you had multiple vessels in the physical world within, I guess, the third dimension, 
at different locations, you could hypothetically transfer your consciousness through some sort of wave or internet or whatever the fuck the new way of transferring data is. You could transfer the data of your consciousness to a vessel in a different location, and it would functionally be the same exact thing as teleporting. It would just technically be a different physical vessel. Uh, we I think can... we're getting there with VR, you know? it's We're close. Yeah, VR, I think, is the next big step. And it took, VR it took a long time to get where it's at. Like, it's, uh, I remember when virtual reality was first put, uh, pitched to, to the American public, specifically to the American public for this uh, story. And uh, it, it was it was hard to conceptualize and to understand. But after a while, you start seeing those little VR uh, stands at the arcades where, you know, you could put on a helmet, some gloves and all this uh, all this bullshit on you. And you can run in a virtual world. Now, everything looks like Tron and all that stuff, but that's to be expected. But it did catch on for a while. Then we had those ones where you can get into like a pod or something and you can you can see sort of uh, the virtual reality like it's it's like a VR chat, except without like a helmet or anything. And now we're here at this point where I can just uh, VR is highly affordable. Well, maybe not highly affordable, affordable, but if you just didn't care about like, you know, you're spending 50 bucks or a thousand bucks for a VR headset, that's, I guess, reasonable because you could just spend a hundred bucks, get some rinky dink little fucking headset, experience virtual reality. Though, to what degree you want the experience to go to depends on your uh, monetary level of commitment. And I think that's really exciting too, because I believe, like, I, I believe that the future is in VR. Like, uh, I attended a, uh, a, uh, uh, hiring uh seminar uh what, what the fuck do they call the like a, like a press conference no well like no i've been to a couple uh i've been to a couple of press conferences they were really neat in vr uh no the uh job fair there we go that's the words i'm uh. looking for uh yeah i i went to a virtual job fair and all of the uh uh all, a lot of big tech uh uh, uh, uh industry types and owners of uh uh, little tech startups and junk were there. Most of them were European because I think the Europeans are, they seem to be a little bit more enthusiastic about that uh, aspect of technology than we are because we're too fat and stupid and selfish to really care about it. And really, we just want an Oculus Quest so we can watch our porn in 3D. Oh, and yeah. Ourselves and, that. and there's nothing really wrong with that, but it just, it really does sort of speak to the uh, level of shallowness in the everyday American, uh, o American, uh, the everyday American, American, people. American people. I'll agree to live in a pod and eat bugs only if my pod has VR porn. See, I fear that because I watch Black Mirror, you know, and there's an episode where your your room is like a, you, you, the, the, the TV is the are the walls in your room, right? And all you're done is like by the corporation or whatever the, the governing entity was at the time. It was uh, they tell you what your schedule is, what your job is. Uh, if you're this or if you're fat or undesirable, you get the shitty jobs and people uh, uh, like they oppress you. They, they laugh at you. They shame you. And it's encouraged to do so in society. Oh, so the real society. world. And uh it kind of freaks me out, man, because I don't want a corporation or a government uh, dictating the path of my life on that level, or really any level for that matter. I, I like, I'll be honest, I, I kind of break like the law, quote unquote, whenever like it's it impedes my progress personally. Yeah, like look at marijuana users. Yeah, laws, a, a lot of laws, a lot of dumb laws that harm you rather than help you are quaint suggestions like all you gotta do in order to be free is just not get caught <laughs> which is kind of the i don't know the secret saying in this country is like you can be free just don't get caught doing it 
yeah, like don't for example, don't post your crimes on your Instagram live, you know. Oh, that's like so that. stupid. <laughs> that's so dumb. Like, dude, like you have like all sorts of OGs from back in the day fucking telling these kids, hey, don't fucking like post I, I I'm at, you know, I'm at that one bitch's fucking house. I'm getting that PS5 and all this shit. Like, dude, no, fucking don't do that. Like, Yo, I'm like, smoking crack at 184 <laughs> Fish like that, Lane. That's, that's what always bothered me about this generation is like, you know, they're on they well, they used to be on Facebook going, hey man, I got that kill of fire, hit me up, and they fucking published their public number. I like dude, dude no. what a honeypot. Oh, dude, yeah, like this screams fed. Cop, cop, that cop. That still cop. happens all the time. People post like and I think I think a lot of them are real, but it's just like, why? Why are you doing mm. this? It's why I didn't trust the fucking deep web or dark web or whatever the fuck people are calling that these days. You know, Silk Road. Like, dude, this feels just like a fed fucking dream. Like, I'm not going to get any drugs. I'm going to get a knock on my fucking door, man. Like, I, I get, I, I get kind of freaked out by shit like that because it's tempting. You know, you want to sell oh, me you like you'll get drugs, but eventually you'll get a knock on your door. Yeah, yeah, and you know, there's no like way to see if these drugs aren't tainted or anything like that. Like, I like to do my drug deals face to face. Like, that I can tell it... you from experience, if there's a like a like a dark web investigation going on, mm -hmm. every fucking branch of law enforcement busts your fucking door down. I know oh, because yeah. it's happened here. Like, really, it happened to you? It happened to our house. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. My, my sister's ex, yeah. Literally every branch. The fucking, the feds, the CIA, the fucking uh, local police, the state police, fucking the mail service, the postal service, the U.S. Postal Service. They, they were fucking here. All at DA. once. Just like this yeah, like, literally. group of crazy law enforcement. Well, I mean, it was mostly SWAT and then like at least a representative from fucking everything. And mm. they were, they're just all there. Yeah, because I remember I asked one guy and he said he was from the fucking Postal Service. I was like, what, <laughs> what the fuck? How are you involved in this? <laughs> yeah. Because of the dark web. It's stuff that got mailed. It's drugs that got mailed. And it crossed state lines and all sorts of like yeah, violated all sorts in. of. Yeah, violated all sorts of federal laws, delivery laws. Like there's so much shit. Yeah, it was like one of the big it was the at the time that this happened, it was the largest fentanyl raid in the U.S. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that shit fucking spooks me, man. It's like ever since uh, uh, Tommy Chong got busted uh, for uh, his business selling bongs uh, across the, you know, the United <laughs> States, they fucking busted him for like selling, a, of selling some uh, smoke pieces in a couple of states where all that shit was very illegal, but they didn't have that. And they went after his son and they said they would lock his son up if uh, he didn't take the rap for it. So they, they, they bust, that's how they busted Tommy Chong for that. Yeah. They, they fucking, they rammed our door down and then they threw a flashbang in and they all fucking stormed in with like, like, MP5s or whatever, like whatever fucking Jesus weapon. fucking Christ. Yeah, it's like fucking Call of Duty. Shit, sounds more like Rainbow Six. <laughs> yeah, and well, and then they zip tied us, and then they just brought us outside. Yeah. For like, have you know. have you not heard a word I've said for like the last twenty minutes? Nope. No, not <laughs> at all. You were muted, and then you didn't say anything. I just I know. You being quiet. I've been talking, and like I thought y'all were ignoring me or some shit. Be a good nah. That's no, your mic was my ignoring mic, you. <laughs> my mic got fucked up, I guess. So. Bitch ass microphone. Wait, yeah. so Robin, can you can you tell us like the story of this? Like, can you give us like a short, quick timeline uh, of this well, drug bust? Well, I'm not gonna say when it was. Uh, yeah, okay. June twelfth, twenty nineteen, at three forty four p.m. <laughs> just, just share like whatever you're comfortable with, but like, just I kind of want to hear like the story a little bit more comprehensively, if that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, 
what when do you want from like when our house got I want to hear like when rated? I want to hear like I want to hear like what happened generally like very vaguely like what happened why y'all were rated and then the story from the point where you you realized you're in trouble yeah it was a fentanyl bust my um my sister's ex was uh got caught up in it he was like wasn't like high on the totem pole but he was still a distributor like he was a street level distributor of it um so like we weren't the main target but they got a fuck ton from him like in terms of money uh, i think they, they got like over a million dollars off of him uh yeah our, it wasn't he didn't keep anything at our house he kept it at his parents house but his parents gave up the hiding spot which they weren't gonna find but i, I guess the police stiff armed the parents and they they told um because they, they searched the place top to bottom they couldn't find anything over there and there was it, it was like hidden in a weird spot um but yeah, what I so we live in like a like a townhouse kind of thing. Yeah. So and there's no interior staircase. So I live in the basement part. Um and there's no connection to like the front door. And that's where the, the SWAT came through. So they like rammed the front door because they had an old blueprint of the house where there was a staircase, like interior staircase. Mm-hmm. Um, See, so yeah, they ran the front door, and then, because I, w what I remember was, police, 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 and then just, like, the loudest sound in the world, which was a flashbang. Yeah. Uh, like, they're unbelievably loud. Like, an, like a, an explosion. This is, like, I don't know, like, five o'clock in the morning or some shit. Because they want you, like, they want to just raid you while you're sleeping, I guess. That's yeah. like the fucking worst fucking part of it is they they do it at night mostly. Yep, they bring you out in your fucking boxers. Like, <laughs> there were a couple of people who were who were not dressed in this house who, you know, were just in a pair of boxers, just fucking sitting on the fucking curb when when we got out. But no, so we didn't get the storm in down here in the basement because they thought they were gonna have to go down a flight of interior stairs to get down here. So, like, we went out the side door, and there were just dudes standing there, like, um, like keeping a perimeter of the house with fucking, I don't know, I, it looked like an MP5-type gun. Like, some automatic weapon. Like, full SWAT dudes. Like, and, and they were so blasé. <laughs> like, the ones in the perimeter, when we came out, they were, like, really just, like... All right, yeah, but like we're gonna have to put you out front too. So put your hands up. <laughs> like it was literally with that amount of enthusiasm. Yeah. And so they they zip tied us and then brought us out to the um to the front curb. And we sat there for like two hours while they searched our house and found nothing. And they, like, fucking flipped the place. Like, it was a fucking mess. That's fucked up. If they if they literally don't find it, <laughs> this sounds really dumb, but if they literally, like, completely destroy your house looking for something that's not there, I feel like they have a sort of... They should literally, like, pay for it to get cleaned up. Yeah, I mean, most of it was stuff that was just, like, easy to clean. They did, like, rip out parts of our insulation, and, like, they ruined a couple of, like, um... Like... I don't know, what's the, what's the word for it? Like... The, the shit your dryer uses to fucking get the water out, you know what I mean? Like, the, those things. Yeah. The big old tubes, the metal tubes. Oh, I know what you're talking about, yeah. Yeah, they, like, ripped up a couple of those. They ripped out insulation. So, like, that stuff sucked. And also the front door, they fucking ran it down. <laughs> no, man, that shit's the fucking worst. Yeah, I mean, it still looks wonky out front, because, like... It was it was pretty structural damage that's like hard to fix. So like they got a new door, but like, but the door was the doorway itself fucked up. Yeah, in in some ways, not enough to justify replacing it. But yeah, I mean it was. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see the ram. I I saw the I had somewhere I have the pin of the flashbang. 
because I, I nice little souvenir. Yeah, I, I picked it up and kept it. I mean, it was scary, but it it not it it mostly just sucked. <laughs> like sitting out, yeah. On the curb. You got all the fucking eyeballs coming out the windows. Everyone in the neighborhood just fucking peering out. Understandably so. I would be morbidly curious if that happens next door to me. Uh, they handled both the dogs really well, which is uncharacteristic of police. Yeah? What do they do? So, the friendlier dog, they just put a leash on him and took him. Like, they like literally no precautions. There was literally just one guy who was on, like, that dog's duty, and he just had the leash. It wasn't one of those, like, you know, stiff leashes or everything. It was just a normal ass leash, and he was just walking them around. Um, and the more aggressive dog, um, they had the stiff leash. So what they did is they locked the dog in the bathroom. So they got they cleared all of us out. Um, I think my sister like told them to like lock the bathroom where the dog was in, and so they did that, and then went in through like the window on the side and like put the stiff leash on from there. And then had someone else come in from the other side and get another stiff leash on, on and then like kind of maneuver out of the bathroom. Because they're both like one was a pit bull, one was a pit mastiff. Like they, these are big, big dogs, you know? Yeah. Big boys. Yeah. I mean, the pit mastiff was huge, but that was the friendlier one. So. Um, yeah, I mean, th they did that pretty well. They um, readjusted our handcuffs and like zip ties and stuff if we wanted, like quite a lot. Like you know, a lot of us were like, "Hey, can we just get handcuffs instead of zip ties?" And like they they were fine with that, and they were fine with like loosening them a bit, and I don't know that like that was pretty chill and nice. Yeah, because it's just one of those things where it's like if we're raiding, you know, like they they with the amount of police and like heat that was on the house at that point um it wasn't like we need evidence or anything it was let's see what we can get back in terms of money and drugs for the state and the police department yeah it was just let's get this shit off the street they took um any any big bags so there was illegal stuff in the house but not what they were looking for um, and not the kind of money they were looking for either. Like there was weed. Um, all the weed got taken that was in like a certain quantity. Like they left, um, you know, small baggies or like joints. They didn't care about taking that. But any like large supplies that were in like one bag or container or anything that got taken. Um, uh, I think there were like, there were some pills, like a jar of pills, like just assorted, like illicit pills that got taken. Um, no, not Robin's jar of assorted illicit pills. No, How could they take before, it? This is before I did assorted illicit pills. <laughs> okay, somebody else's jar of assorted illicit pills. Yeah. <laughs> um, my my cousin was doing like a waiting job at the time, and so he had a lot of cash tips. Goodbye. <laughs> There's no way to prove that's yours, so the police department took it. Um, which was like a good few thousand dollars. That he had in like cash tips. Oh, that's fucked. Yeah. Well, because like they're like, you need to prove that this is your income. And it's like, it's fucking tips at a fucking waiting job. There's no proof. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Yeah, they fucked everyone's room up. They fucked my room up more than like anyone else, it felt like. They knew you were the problem child. They knew if it was in anybody's room, it was in yours. This is true because when. When I heard police in the flashbang, everyone like went out to look, but f the first thing I did was turn my phone off, turn my computer off, like <laughs> just just, you know, don't give them anything. You know, not that I had anything, it was just like I don't want them to even begin to In like, case they are listening, I do not have anything. However, <laughs> no, it was just like, you know, you hear a stupid shit where like someone someone will get their house searched and then like their roommate will have like a computer on and the computer will have like you know something on it that's like pretty mundane but it's like oh we're getting you for it 
Uh, oh or, yeah, or the they have like Tor or something downloaded on their computer. What uh, do you have Tor for? Right. Yeah. Stupid shit like that. You know. Or or fucking uh, what's that guy's name? The guy who got arrested because he he like threatened someone in RuneScape, and then the police found the like anarchist cookbook on his computer. <laughs> no, I, I didn't hear about that. Quick question. This is a question for Robin, not Mo, because I feel like if I ask Mo, I'm gonna get like a research paper. So I'm asking Robin for a concise answer. Uh, what is Tor? <laughs> yeah, I would give you research paper. Yeah, research paper. Tor, Tor is a Linux-based browser. I guess you can get it on Windows, but like, there's no reason to. It's a browser that generally you run on like a Linux engine. Um, and that's like how you can access the dark web. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, you have like a bunch of nodes and stuff that are like a addresses to Tor nodes and junk that you can access sort of like that that uh nodes internet and web pages and stuff and it's all very boring and very mundane. It's just basically a bunch of chan chan channers, old channers and stuff like saying the N word and junk like it's like, you know, still two thousand and eight. Such as Mo Diggity then, saying the N word of 4chan. No, I never said the N word of 4chan. It's like honeypots. There's a couple of like. Yeah, there's a lot of honeypots. Yeah. Um, like, there's shit on there that like, yeah, you can get you can get drugs. I I've I've heard of people getting drugs. Um, well, I mean, like I said, my house got raided because someone bought drugs. I guess whoever Why? whoever my sister's ex was buying from was getting those drugs from someone who was getting the mail or some shit like that. My my question for you, Robin, is you say um Tor is a Linux based thing that and there's no reason to have it on Windows. Why 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 do you say it's there's no reason to have it on Windows? Because you lose all the you run it on Linux because it's it doesn't have um Basically, what you do is you you install a Linux client on a USB, and then from your start menu, you run Linux through there. So that way, you're just completely detached from your computer. Yeah. Like, you want to be as detached from your, your computer and your internet. Because um, if, you, if you run it on your computer, you still have other processes running. Like, if you just run it on Windows, like, download Tor or put Tor on here. <laughs> First of all, like, there's some stuff you can't access, but also... Because you can't just use it as a browser, I guess. But also, like, there's all these other background processes that you have. On Is it your... illegal to have Tor? No. No, <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. I'm it's pretty sure, though, might... if you're being investigated for a crime, like, a lot of things that are completely legal are going to get you in, or get you, increase the likelihood of you getting in trouble. Yeah, yeah. They, 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 you'll get looked at with a little bit more suspicion if you have it on there. If you get busted or something. I see, I see. Most people still get caught using Tor anyway, so. Yeah, because they're fucking dumb and they're not careful at all that. And they don't they don't treat, you know, the, the deep or dark web or whatever it is. Uh, uh, like, they, they still treat it like they're on fucking Facebook. And they still post their, their normal, like, doc shit on there like it's nothing and it's like this is how you get swatted and fucked with and junk like that it's also a place where piracy reigns supreme and where you can get a bunch of other illicit programs and stuff that can sniff out people's uh ip and and junk like that you know the fun stuff yeah anything anything you're scared of happening on the regular internet that's basically what the deep web is like, it's just anything that you're worried about, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't engage with uh, 4chan because this might happen to me and they might do this to, to with my information. That's pretty much like the entire Tor network. It's just that shit. And pop child porn. Most of it, I would say most of it's fairly mundane. Like, I, I have a couple horror stories about using the dark web and I've sort of, um, I guess promised myself to never go back on there unless I it's, it's doxes child porn and drugs don't forget the drugs yes so yes it's just like hipsters who don't want to use the normal internet and so you'll find like a but like a lot of people just have like random blogs and shit on tour it's like some fucking hippies just yeah, using well, the yeah, dark web like to write their who, blogs yeah where it's like 
oh i don't want to use the real internet like only cool people can see my blog you know or like yeah nobody- yeah yeah. I don't want to like, use the real internet. I want to use the child porn and drugs internet. It's basically like the the shortwave radio of internet. After Elon Musk though launches his uh <clears throat> more of his satellites though, we'll have a a different sort of internet uh, Elon you know, running through the world. No, I'm actually really looking forward to that cuz the idea that we can start making more uh, internet style sort of internets, basically. That's, I mean, that's, well, internet style internets. What the fuck does that mean, Mo? God. Uh, internet actually, style internet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that that's actually really fucking awesome to me. I, I would love, like, an idea. I would love an internet where. Um, yeah, if the internet's a make, good, why is internet too, you know? <laughs> like, it, it would be great if. Uh, you know, we, we can have an internet where we can make our own payment processors and, you know, uh, social media-esque outlets and junk like that that was run by, you know, people like us. It would be great. I, I would love that. It's just that we kind of, we we don't have that right now. Or if there is, we sure as shit ain't going to find out about it because we're not the cool kids. I mean, you can make your own social media. If you really want, uh, but then I get a bunch of fucking Nazi assholes on there. Yeah, you make a mo cord. <laughs> or mo like, oh, okay, mo tube, mo tube. When what is? Why has uh, Zuckerberg not talked about Meta that much anymore? <laughs> because Facebook, Meta. Facebook's fucking dying and agonizing death and has had nothing but years of bad PR since 2016. And, I mean, they're um, doing pretty well, it seems like. Well, they're doing pretty well on paper, but it seems like a lot of people are moving away from Facebook, and they're going on to other places. This is a and... distorted vision. Like, this is something that people on our part of the internet say, but, like, Facebook is still huge. Yeah, I, I like to pretend. I like I like to think that maybe by saying Facebook is going to die, it'll kill it faster. But the truth of the matter is, you know, there's still like maybe a billion or so. Like, there's probably like a billion or so people that still use Facebook, and they pretend that they don't, but they still do. Like, all my friends still on post on Facebook. I'm the only fucking holdout that doesn't. Yeah, I talk shit about only once in a while. I talk shit about Facebook all the time, but I'm on there like I check it. I check my Facebook at least once every three days. I I do use Messenger every day, but yeah, I I love Messenger. Messenger is just the best Messenger app out there. We used to have like the thing that really fucks with me is that we used to have so many uh, alternatives, and they've uh, slowly went away. Like there used to be ICQ, Internet Messenger, uh, even even like oh AIM too, uh, and then after a while, Facebook Messenger popped up and all that, and all the other programs just sort of slowly died off. Or Kick, <laughs> oh god, oh god, Kick! I forgot about Kick. How I could forgot you forget it. about Kick. The Snapchat. Oh, what a what a what a place Kick Kick was. Kick is literally just like gay pedophiles now. Yeah. Oh my god. Like the only time I ever hear about Kick is in those like predator catching videos where like we went on Kick and created a fake little boy. Ugh. I miss Perch. Perch was uh oh god, what was it? A uh some boomer shit? Some boomer shit. Oh it, it's it's beyond I don't boomer, know what it is. It's boomer shit, yeah. Yeah, it's it's beyond boomer shit actually. It's uh you used to have to have the uh, the the chat room's code. You put it in. You put the code in there, and then you access the chat room. And then you just yell swears at one another and say that their branded music, movies, or TV sucks. And that was great. At the oh man, IRC is still pretty nichely popular. Yeah, IRC is so great. I just I never use it anymore, and I wish I did because I love IRC chat. It's always great. Yeah, a lot of them are still going like mildly strong. Mm-hmm. It's just Discord's kind of overwhelmed everything in that respect. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm kind of happy that uh, what was this? Uh, Gilded, Gilded is kind of cool. It, it's a Discord alternative. Basically, it's a home base for when your Discord gets nuked from orbit because someone came in and started posting huge dicks everywhere and then racial slurs and then reports you for it and then you get nuked. That's that's kind of what Gilded is. Anyway, we're at the uh, 146 mark. Uh, do you guys still have something to say? Or do you want to start wrapping it up? Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so y'all want to do the same? Yeah. All right. Uh, well, final thoughts, anyone? Uh, Demi, I guess we'll start with you. We'll go down the list and just uh, wrap it up from there. Um, brain chip's bad, but teleportation sounds kind of cool. Hell yeah. Uh, Riley? Uh, I will eventually succumb and start living in a pod and eating the bugs, if that is what the future holds for me, because I have no will to resist, and that will be my reality. So someday we will, I will be doing the mocast from my pod. Oh, Christ. <laughs> uh, Robin? If you're not agnostic, you're being willfully stupid. <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me to be agnostic. I'm I'm interested in everything. I just I don't think that there's anything out there, I guess. Can you be I sure? want there to be. I want there to be. I just uh I we, we've never really seen anything really definitive that I can like, you know, put my finger on and go, "Okay, uh, I, I can see this now. Like, I, I love the 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 ones that mess with radio waves when they're like, hey, uh, my name's Steve. I love that shit because that's fucking awesome. But anyone who's ever taken editing or learned how to edit for like five minutes knows how to fake those. So, yeah. And then second final point, uh, if your main personality is atheist. You you have a shitty life. <laughs> yeah. Get fucked, Demi Gloom. Are you just sending <laughs> shots at me? Yes. <laughs> we, we, listen, on the issue crew, the issue crew religion episode is going to go so hard, and Robin's going to be on it, and we're going to get like we're going to get like a person of every religion. We're going to get a Muslim, a Christian. Uh, <laughs> Yo, we're going to gather the Avengers. They're yeah, they're they're all gonna team up against me, the one intellectual who knows the truth. With facts, you're not and an logic. intellectual because if you were an intellectual, you would know you can't know the truth. We know who is not either an atheist or agnostic. I know actually a bunch of people who are uh, very Christian now because Christian kind of feels like it. Well, it feels like it's being marketed as the new counterculture. So uh, religion, despite what people tell you, like on social media and Twitter and stuff, I think it's starting to make like an even bigger comeback now because it's being marketed as like the new uh, counterculture. Like, hey, you know, you know, uh, individuality is cool, but have you uh, accepted Jesus? I never you thought know. I'd see a day where like the edgiest people on the Internet were like fucking evangelical Christians. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've seen. Yeah, gosh, man, that's fucking nuts to actually think of and see. Like, like it used I'm, to be people listening to Ozzy and fucking insane clown posse shit. Now it's like, I love you know, uh, country music and Christ. <laughs> you know, like I, I'm a young child, so like my idea of like internet edginess was shaped by like. 2016 like 2014 through 2016 era like youtube so like filthy frank and idubs and fucking leafy is here and stupid mm -hmm. shit like that but like that era of like edginess online was very um i don't it's, it wasn't apolitical and it wasn't it definitely wasn't like as uh as like apolitical and centrist as people pretend it was but it was certainly not christian in any capacity nor was it like traditional conservative whereas that's like yeah being pushed was... as the new edgy now now it's now like wanting a trad wife and fucking your sister and hating black people 
it's just the new edgy and it makes no sense to me see i yeah i hate the atheists and this is maybe this is an age difference thing demi but like you didn't live through the like reddit atheist richard dawkins support Ooh. like the fucking yeah you know what i'm talking about mo Those people, i i, oh I my actually God. yeah I, i've i have actually uh, attended a uh, richard dawkins lecture it was really really good richard dawkins just... is okay but like also well back then the it was something like, new dawkins is our like dawkins yeah. is our god you know like <laughs> It's like, and Christopher Hitchens is our Lord, dude. Like Chris, Christopher Hitchens would is like an old school fucking Brit. He's going to spit in your face, smoke a cigarette, and blow it out in your fucking face, man. Get out of here. What do they call cigarettes in in the British lands? They called Bag. cigarettes. Bone fags. <laughs> oh Christ! Gays uh, against fags. Mark this down, please. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no. And, yeah, uh, it's too good. Yeah, atheism on on uh on the internet used to be really really great, and then no, it used to uh, be cringe. It used to be cringe. Well, no, no, I'm 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 getting to the point where it's getting cringe. Like, okay, and then and then Reddit and Twitter and 4chan got involved, and you got what we have here today. Like, I used to be a staunch atheist. Now it's sort of like, well, I mean, I don't believe in God, and I don't know if I'm entirely convinced of spirituality and stuff but in order to be an atheist like a proper atheist these days you have to adopt like a certain set of politics that doesn't jive well with my uh spirit of individualism like i'm not going to tip my fucking fedora to all the to to science to precious fucking science and and all it like and the uh the the cult sort of fanaticism, the fanatical devotion to science is a little bit uh uh I will God with, 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 with for lack of a better term problematic because anyone that any group of people that gets into something and, and devotes themselves so much the, and on that level it's very concerning and that that spooks the shit out of me because an atheist piece I don't think it ever be have a misunderstanding of science is the problem yeah. It's I not think... it's not a worship of science. It's not taking science their word. It's like completely misrepresenting science cuz science oftentimes will like everything is a theory in science. Like I, I have not, a like the big oh, go go ahead. Ahead. No, you yeah, first. No, go, go ahead. Okay, so for me the big thing is like I don't have a problem with people with like having like a strong devotion to a set of moral characteristics or like scientific or political ideas or philosophies to me it's when it's when these philosophies and i guess when this like train of thought is being represented by a group of people or a person and then your devotion for that ideology becomes a devotion for this specific group of people and you allow yourself to be uh i guess the victim of their authority that's that's the problem for me because like for me like there are, i have strong fundamental principles that I strongly doubt I will ever change or even really question. But when it comes to people, like you need to question all authority when it comes to the people that you are looking up to or the people that you're allowing to represent your views. And that's that's the big problem with a lot of these atheist people. They're fucking sucking the cocks of Neil deGrasse Tyson and Richard oh. Dawkins just like so hard to the point where they it's it's more than just being an atheist and believing in science it's about worshiping this cult that cult you know i mean this cult that acts in the name of science but isn't science itself it's yeah, more than know, just science at that point yeah uh, the the group with the guns and the pitchforks and torches and stuff it really doesn't matter if they come bearing a cross or like you know waving a bible or waving a richard dawkins book it's still a a group with guns and pitchforks and torches coming toward me, you know, that, that freaks me out. Cause, uh, I, you know, I, I, I feel like we're going to end up seeing that again. And it's going to be really, really soon where large groups of devotees to insert ideology here are going trans to start ideology. going through what the trans ideology versus the, the normal people. <laughs> 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 like, i freak out about that you know because like i i grew up watching world war ii fucking uh movies and tvs and stuff and you know seeing how the the nazis and the national socialist party uh you know 
broke down people's doors and dragged them out of their fucking homes and put them on trains or killed them outright and stuff like i think that we'll see that in america real real soon like in the next five years we're going to start having incidences of uh ideologues going around rounding people up and shit i can and just 41 percent we'll myself i don't want anyone to kill themselves over that i think you know dying that's Dying my right a... as an American to <laughs> fucking kill myself, okay? <laughs> Depending on what demographic you're in. <laughs> True. All right, Mo, I have a very important question for you. What's up? Where can our listeners find you? <laughs> oh, motherfucker. <laughs> well, where can our listeners find you, actually, Riley, since I go last always? Oh, that's true. Uh, <laughs> find me at anchor.fm slash Riley Megafeed or the Riley Podcast Megafeed on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, it's a cool place. There's some podcasts there, and in the links in the description is everything else that I do. And yeah, there you go. Uh, since Riley really wants to leave Robin, where can they find you at? You can find me on Twitter at Insight Alloy, and then you can find me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Insight Alloy. All right. And, Inside uh, Zoidberg's a better insight. Oh, God. And uh, 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 Demi, where can they find ye? Um, you can find me at Demi Gloom. That's D E M I G L O O M on pretty much any platform. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Also, look up Demi Gloom on Spotify and YouTube. Uh, if you like the, if you like the editing of the MoCast, both the visuals and the audio editing, uh, check me out. I do cheap. I edit for cheap. So hit me up on any social media if you want me to do podcast or audio editing or visuals or anything like that. You can also find her on slash r slash atheist. Uh, no, <laughs> I, I don't engage with those people. R atheism. <laughs> uh, and y'all can find me at uh, twitter.com forward slash Moside Gaming. I pin tweet all my shit on there. And I'll uh, make the announcement of whether or not I'm sticking with Twitch or just moving full on to YouTube, which I'm feeling that I want to go to YouTube, but we'll see. All right, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for coming out, and uh, I'll see you around. Join us next time for the MoCast. I've been Mo. I've been I've, Riley. I've been Demi Flynn. And I've been Robin. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yeah.